This is my story, okay? Uh, I was born in Mississippi. No, y'all don't want to go back that far, do you? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, I was born in a little town called Bremen, Mississippi. A um, little country town. You know, it was hard life. You had to uh, basically work for everything you need. I mean, you have to work hard for everything. Um, single parent. Uh, I was very abused as a little girl. Very abused. Uh, I was abused by my mom uh, physically. Uh, emotionally, my mom was a cursor. I know none of y'all girls curse in here, do you? No, no. Let's see who looks like a cursor. <laughs> you got that right. Okay. <laughs> well, my mom cursed all the time, okay? So I hated curse words. I tell my kids all the time, don't do that. But anyway, I was abused, and I was also sexually abused from the age of six years old, okay? I was abused by my uncle to the point where I thought that it was right. The only kind of love I got was molestation, and I thought that that was the right thing to do, but we all know that's not the right thing to do. And I was well over the age of you girls, and I still was uh, allowing my uncle to, you know, sexually abuse me. Uh, I was maybe 22, and I was still uh, allowing him to do that because mentally he had, you know, he had a brainwashed me to think that that was so. So I'm very protective of my girls. You know, I always ask them, how are you doing? You know, do you trust this person? If you ever have a, a feeling, you know, the abuser would tell me, well, your mom, you know, think you're bad. She doesn't like you, so I love you. I'm not somebody, so the only person who loves you. So the only type of love that he gave me, the love that I was looking for was any kind of love. So the love that he gave me was good, but that was the wrong kind of love. So say my mom, don't let anyone abuse you. If it don't feel right, then like they said in Mississippi, it ain't right, okay? <laughs> So then I moved from Mississippi. I hated the life. I hated everything about Mississippi. I did not want my girls. Everything is also black and white in Mississippi, okay? White people stay on their side of town. Black people stay on their side of town. When it's time to come to work, you come together, the white man will tell you or the white woman will tell you, we got a job to do. I don't like you. You black, let's get this job done. You go to your side of town, and I'm going to go to my side of the town. So I didn't like that. So I promised to never raise my girls to know the difference. Funny story, the diamond, my 13-year-old, also again plays basketball. And when she was six years old, she thought that she was white. Okay, <laughs> she's not. <laughs> and she loved, you could not tell her that she was not. She would live, she only had this much hair. Okay, it was like really short. And she would just flip it in. She would all the time ask me, you know, why my hair so short or whatever. And I was like, why are you asking me this? And she was like, well, because I don't want to be white people. I want to be white because they have long hair and yada yada. So I said, like, well, this is not the right attitude to adopt. You are a Afro-American child. You are beautiful. You are smart. You are all the things that my mother did not tell me I was. Okay. So um, she outgrew that. I don't know by 11 years old, and then she, you know, she kind of like decided, well, okay, I'm going to be who I am. I'm going to accept who I am. Then she started getting tall. Uh, and between that time, we decided to, you know, again, move to Louisville, and I moved here. The schools were great. People were great. You know, there was no difference between color, but I didn't see it anyways. And I wanted my kids to have a better life. So we moved here, and I was just so excited, so happy. My husband had a good job, and, you know, we were just able just to, you know, uh, enjoy ourselves. And then about a year, maybe 10 months after moving here, I get a lump in my breast, in my left breast. Is that even right? Yeah, my left breast. Well, I feel it, and it's like, okay, it's okay. Well, then it swells up, and it is hot, and it has fever in it, and it hurts around the nipple area. And then it looks like the color of an orange peel. This breast is here. This person's way out here. I'm like, that's not normal. I was 27 years old. I'm not gonna tell y'all I am now, in business. But um, <laughs> I was 27, so I was really young, you know. And I was, you know, hitting the clubs up, and I just thought I had it going on, you know. So I get this uh, this fever in my breast, and I go to the doctor, and they said, Well, you're too young, you know. I had a baby, a new baby. She was about maybe a year old, and she was still nursing from my breast. And she, he was like, well, maybe you know, have milk ducts, which is when you breastfeed your baby, you have this milk duct and it clocks up 
like sour milk, and you have to release it with antibiotics to relieve it. So a whole year went by, two years went by, I was being treated with antibiotics. Well, that didn't work. The breast got worse, it got more painful, and I went back and I sat in the doctor's office and I said, listen, my baby is three now, I'm not breastfeeding her by no means because she's big as me, and <laughs> I'm in pain and you have to do something to me. Lesson number three, if you know something's wrong with your body, they can think you're crazy, but let them think that. Make them do, tell your mom, if it's gonna be with your dad or with your grandparents, tell somebody, there's something wrong, there is something wrong with me and I need you to fix it, okay? So, two years went by and the breast was, um, by that time, they were like, okay, you keep complaining, we're gonna give you a biopsy. They did a biopsy, they did a mammogram, and it was cancer in my breast, 80%. Uh, it's called inflammatory breast cancer. This breast cancer is the rarest breast cancer known. Uh, I am supposed to be dead right now. They tell me you're not gonna live past a year with this breast cancer. This can we don't know that much about it. We're gonna treat you with, um, we're gonna treat you with chemotherapy. Some of you girls heard about chemotherapy. So the chemotherapy is your cancer is 80% evasive. We're gonna have to remove <coughs> the breast. So your cancer is here. We can treat you with cancer here, but your cancer is over the chemo. So we're gonna boost up your chemo. Now your heart may explode. So we're gonna have to give you steroids. So I was walking around with steroids, uh, taking steroids, and I was really big and strong. I was bullying around everybody too. You should have come out thought I had it going on. But I was really big and strong, you know, and I had all this strength to build up my heart. Well, I took the chemo, uh, I uh, had a double mastectomy. I had my left breast, which was the face removed, and for a precaution, because it had moved into my lymph nodes, and lymph nodes are little cells that's under your arm that move and it travels all over your body. You have them here, you have them under your arm, and then you have them somewhere down there. I'm not a scientist, but, but there it is. So they travel, okay, and um, they go to different organs. So then by the time I had made it to my lymph nodes, and I took chemo and I was cured for seven years. Life was good, you know, the kids were growing up, getting uh, uh, bigger and uh, the diamond, you know, had to find herself. My other girls were finding themselves. And uh, in between time, uh, I moved to Louisiana. Um, my kids edited it there. I did too, so I moved back found out that the cancer had came back, but this time it came back more aggressive. It came back in my liver, in my lung, in my spine, in my bone, in my rectum, and in my colon. So I have cancer six places. In my, in all of my, in my major, or the major organ is my liver. And this is what's, I'm terminal. Basically, um, I have a five year survival rate. But with the help of friends, Coach Ken is one of the best men that I know. I don't, I had a, a very, very hard time with trusting men, especially around my daughters. Uh, I got remarried. My first husband left me when my breasts were removed, okay? My second husband married me. He is the stepfather of all my kids. And uh, he basically said, breasts don't make a woman. It's what's on the inside that makes a woman. And I guess my insides is okay, you know, as far as what he saw. So and I've been married now uh, for six years to my second husband. And uh, we're happy. We are really happy. But Coach Ken is one of the, the best men that I know. I trust him. Uh, he, uh, we became homeless in the course of moving here. My kids um, had nowhere to live. My husband lost his job. Uh, it was hard on us. We didn't have. Uh, food, we didn't have clothes for my kids. People came together and helped us, and they loved us. And basketball showed the diamond who she really was because they would call her a man. They were like, oh, you're big, because she was like the biggest kid in the class. And I'm like, oh, you're a man, you're like a boy. And she would cry all the time. And she is the prettiest thing I've ever seen. She has like these dimples and <laughs> big old eyes, and she just, oh, you know, I love her, I love her. But, um, it showed her who she was, it really did. She was like, hey, I'm gonna use this height 
And I'm going to use all this anger I got in me because everybody's <coughs> talking about me. And I'm going to learn how to play basketball. You should have seen that first. She looked at ridiculous <laughs> on that court. I didn't know. I don't know anything about basketball. I don't know that it's a basketball. That's all I know. But she looked totally ridiculous. But it, it made me want to live. It made me want to, you know, uh, get up in the morning. It made me want to say, oh, there's going to be a tomorrow. And no matter what life brings you, you just have to accept whatever comes your way. Life, you have to accept it. You accept it. You have to go on, face it, acknowledge whatever it is. If it's anger, if it's fear, acknowledge it and say, I am somebody. I don't care how hard my life is. I don't care how bad. I had teachers when I was in Mississippi tell me, your mama dress you like a slave, you look like a slave, your hair is nappy, you're too skinny. Well, I used to be skinny now. Like I said, thanks to steroids, I could probably take all of y'all. So, <laughs> but you're too skinny and you know, you talk funny. When I moved here, it's like you talk funny. Fear is, is, is from the enemy. Fear is just, you're not supposed to, be, I mean, you can be afraid, but fear, it stops you. Fear stops you. So I just came to encourage you girls to go forward in life. You know, take criticism. Uh, when you, when you, there are rules in life. You know, there are consequences to the decisions that you make. So everything you do, there is a consequence. Well, whether it's a good consequence or a bad consequence, and you have a choice to make in life. I just say, you know, um, encourage yourself first because uh, I, I had a problem with self-esteem. And the word self-esteem means just that self. What do you think about yourself? Doesn't matter what anybody else thinks about you, but what do you think about yourself? So go out there, play ball, do what your parents tell you to do, do what respectful adults ask you to do. When you see an adult or an elder person, try to respect that person and be all that you can be. Stay in school, get your education. Because I was a high school dropout, okay? I had no encouragement in school. I had no one to tell me, you know, Angela, you can make it, you can do it. But I did go on, and, and, and now I'm uh, working on getting my GED, so I'm doing that now. And I am going to get it, you know. I didn't know that algebra was so hard. <laughs> wow. But my kids are helping me. So, y'all stay in school. Okay, stay in school. I can see this is a good group right here. And with the help of, you know, good people like Coach Ken and uh, Coach P. Coach P. Okay. See again, old time kicked in. <laughs> you guys you guys can do it. You can do it. Thanks for having me. <laughs> Do you have any questions of Angel? Yeah, go ahead. Ask me anyway. Anyway. I got one. Angel obviously you just told your story. What, what drives you? What, what, why do you have the attitude? I mean, you, you've smiled since you walked in the door, and if I had one thing happen that you've happened, I, I'd probably blow my brains out by now, but, but what, what drives you? Mm, and just reading the Bible and praying when I was a little girl, I used to always ask God, you know, to help me. But I know if I'm going through this, you know, you're somewhere in the picture. So that, that's what kept me strong. 